Hello. Hola. Ni hao. Sambuna. Hola. What is this project about? Come with me. Energy. It fuels progress, it fuels quality of life. As the standard of living increases, so does the energy consumption. With a starving 1.6 billion people, a quarter of humanity living without electricity, it is imperative that we find new economical sources of energy. See that? There is no sun in the UK, but there is plenty of wind. Look. As a group of five aeronautical engineering students at Imperial College London, we will set the task to design, manufacture, test and evaluate a small scale turbine. Our design was subject to three constraints. It should rotate clockwise when viewed from the wind. It should not exceed 3,000 revolutions per minute when spinning. Finally, it will be manufactured as a single ABS plastic part in a 3D printer this size. 400 times by 150 times by 100 millimeters. The main objective of this project will be to maximize a power efficiency measure known as power coefficient, CP. This is the electric power produced by a turbine divided by the total wind power available by the blades. Finally, maximum power coefficient should be achieved at a TSR tip speed ratio between 3 and 8. TSR is defined in our blade. It's the velocity of the tip of the blade, this velocity, over the velocity of the incoming flow. If the rotor of the wind turbine turns too slowly, most of the wind will pass unperturbated between the rotor blades. Alternatively, if the rotor turns too quickly, the blurring blades will appear like a solid wall to the wind. Therefore, wind turbines are designed with optimal speed ratios, in our case 0.5. Now, in order to extract power from the wind, we need this, an airflow. Introducing airflow to the flow will cause the flow to deflect and become curved, traveling slower in the lower side, faster in the upper side. This generates both lift and drag. The overall objective of the blade is to use these aerodynamic forces to maximize the rotor torque, which in turn is used to generate electricity via a generator. Lift contributes positively to create torque, whereas drag's contribution is negative. Hence, we look for airfoils which have both a high lift to drag ratio and a high maximum lift. Our blades would operate at low wind speeds. We selected only airfoils which perform successfully at low Reynolds number. For the matter of this video, think of Reynolds number as a function of velocity. Ideally, to avoid suppression and store at such low Reynolds number, a very thin airfoil should have been chosen. Nonetheless, the structural integrity has to be considered. So from all these airfoils and available geometries, we shortlisted the E216 and the SG6043. Let's focus on lift coefficient versus angle of attack. Both airfoils have a similar maximum lift coefficient of around 1.5. The main difference lies on the behavior around that maximum. For the SG6043, that maximum is achieved as a peak, whereas for the E216, a plateau in the lift curve provides us a safety margin, allowing it to operate efficiently given a small perturbation in the angle of attack. Considering the rotational dynamics of the blade was critical success, Due to its rotation, the tip of the blades experience a higher rotational velocity and resulting in aerodynamic loads than at the root. Therefore, the blades could be tapered to avoid excessive structural deformations. The effect of relative wind speed and direction varies along the blade. As a result, the blade had to be twisted so that at each blade section, the airfoil was at its optimum angle of attack. Betts and Schmidt's distributions for pitch and cord length were compared, but in the end, the best distribution was selected because it provided greater structural integrity at the root of the blade. The different sized and orientated airfoils had to be linked together to form the blade. These were connected along the point at which the aerodynamic forces would generate no moment to avoid unwanted deformations in our blade. This point is known as the center of pressure. We made a few basic assumptions which made the calculations for the structural analysis more manageable. The main assumptions were we treated our turbine blades as simple beams. Torsion and twisting of the blades were negligible. The predominant forces acting upon the blades were lift, drag, and centrifugal forces, and finally, that fluctual stiffness was constant along the span of the blades. Bending moments and force distributions were calculated. MATLAB performed numerical integration to obtain these, and then further calculations were carried out to find the internal stress distribution and blade deflections. Deflections were looked at and were reasonable. The internal stresses were checked to ensure that the stresses did not become larger than the yield stress of 21.6 MPa. So, up to that moment, that was our design, a standard two-blade wind turbine with elliptical cone. But wait! Then, real stuff happened. 
we received an email from our coordinate in which it was stated that the constraint of one single 3D printed part actually means that from the moment the company leaves the 3D printer to the moment we put in the wind tunnel. In no moment could two different people take parts of the 3D printed component home with them. It changed the rules of the game. This is the available area of the 3D printer and that was our initial design. So we thought bigger blades covering more surface, we could extract more power out of the same flow. The trick here is then somehow fit our design inside the 3D printer box and take advantage of the new situation. We're taking risks with such designs, so go for a three blade wind turbine. At the same TSR, more blades means more power. How to fit such a monster inside a tiny box? Well, we came with the idea of folding blades. Implement a 3D printable mechanism that somehow folded the blades around its root. Don't be scared, this is the resulting design. We had to use very thick air holes around the root to fit our mechanism. Yeah, uh, another beer. And yet another one. We didn't manage to make that work. So we went back to our original and standard design. Nothing was said about the design, so we could remove that and manufacture from aluminium. So forget about our 3D printable mechanism and keep the blades a standard, non-foldable. And look at that. Pam! Now we have three independent blades that need to be linked to satisfy the condition of one piece. So we have stopped them. Well, in the real model, it will be a ring instead of a barbecue skewer. The blades fit in the box. If we organize them like this, then we rotate them around the ring that will be linking all the blades together. And we have our three blade wind turbine. Oops, our final design. As you can see, we have three blades linked by a rectangular ring. When it unfolds, the hexagonal hub secures the blades in its position and the aluminium cone is a screwed on top of that. That aluminium cone, being as heavy as it was, could also act as a free will absorbing vibrations. Nice. So, our final design is born. When we came to design the point where the blades met the central part of the wind turbine, we ran into some trouble. At the connection point between the central point and the blades, the blades would meet the rings. For the lower ring of the turbine, there was little air shared by the airfoil and the ring. To maximise the air in contact with the body and the airfoil, the idea of a cylinder blended into the airfoil and wing was used. Time to put it to practice. One of you. To create the hub, we used this turning machine to remove the outer material. We then changed this input into a drill bit and was used to create the central hole. After the turning machine, we then input a program in this one. This was then used to create the hexagonal shape and also for the screws that hold our, our blades together. To create the nose, it's put in the CNC machine. It was programmed to then make this profile. Using a drill bit, we removed material here to create the packing slot of our hub. We then printed the blades as a single part using a 3D printer. Due to the limits of the 3D printer, the trailing edges had extra material and these are sent it down to get the design profile. And here are the results. Our turbine self started at around 1 meter per second. The wind turbine was free running until it reached maximum RPM. Then it was slowed down to a preset minimum RPM value and a controlled deceleration. But at 8 meters per second, the front part of the ring started to defect significantly. Since the wind turbine has got into the wind tunnel as a single piece, then it has already satisfied the one piece condition. We decided to cut and remove the link so that we can carry out the test at 10 meters per second. Since the blades were not on the same plane, after carefully blending the blades using heater, we tried to carry out testing at 12 meters per second. Unfortunately, the input voltage was too large and broke the turbine. The maximum CP generated during the whole testing was 1.06 at wind speed of 10 meters per second, and the corresponding TSR was 3.2. By comparing the results of ring on configuration and ring off configuration, it is clear that the turbine generates more power with ring off configuration. With cone off configuration, the wind turbine also generates more power. At the end, we found that the best configuration was without the ring and without the cone. This shows that the cone, while perhaps acting as a flywheel, induced large amounts of drag. A much smaller cone would have been more efficient. At the higher speeds of 8 to 10 meters per second when we tested, we saw two clear planes that the blades started to part ways in, with one of the blades being pitched slightly forward to the other two. And this, we believe, induced drag onto the blade and thus decreased the power that we could extract from the flow. Due to the addition of these faults here and the removal of material, the center of mass could be displaced below from the center of rotation. And this could cause the evaporation to the world. These are the remainings of our blade. You can see, Around the hub, it starts with a cylinder shape. This shape was the main contribution of drag around that area. Still, we needed these cylinders, so we had room to place this screw. In that case, it was attached to the bottom disc with the screw from the inside to outside. Placed here was carrying the flexion that that blade, as a mechanism, was supposed 
to experience. So, in the end, our design wasn't as efficient as possible. That was motivated by the marketing system, which stated that the power available was that one from an area calculated from the longest dimension of a 3D printer. 